Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to go over some key concepts that you guys are going to need for the homework. All right, so let's get started. So starting off, I wanted to go over the three um, def uh, concepts like tautology, contradiction, and contingency. So basically a tautology is when all the values are true. Um, after you get your answer, you look at that column, that vertical column, and you see that there's just T's going all the way down, then all those values are true, and then you just call it a tautology. When you look at your answer and you don't see all T's going down, you see all F's going down, all the values are false, then you put down it's a contradiction. This sentence is a contradiction. If you see there's some true and there's some false, then it's a contingency. And that could just be your explanation. There's some values that are true, some values that are false. Or when it's a contradiction, all the values are false, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look at this question um, and figure out whether it's a tautology, contradiction, or a contingency. So in your homework, you're going to be given simply just the sentence itself, and you're not going to be given anything else. So you have to make that truth table yourself, and then from there, figure it out. So the main connective in this problem is the, uh, the disjunction, right? It's that V looking um, connective. And then you simply look down that column and you find that there's just T's going all the way down. And so in this case, it's a tautology. Okay, so what about logical equivalence? So logical equivalence is when all the values agree for both sentences. So in this uh, question, you would be asked to compare two or three sentences that, um, that you'd find the answer for. So you look at both columns, and then from there you see whether the both columns agree with each other. So if there's a true here, there better be a true over here. If there's a false here, there better be a false over there, right? And then you compare them, you see them both going down, and if they're exactly the same, then they are logically equivalent. If they're different, different then they're not logically equivalent. So let's take a look at these two sentences. So I set up the truth table here for you. Again, you're going to have to do this yourself. And this is definitely a big part of earning credit. If you don't do the truth table, you're not going to get credit. So easy points over here, just fill out the truth table, and then you should be good from there. So again, um, this problem, the first one is similar to the one before, the example beforehand. Um, I think it's exactly the same. But you start off by, I just wanted to review the truth table really quickly. So again, you, you have your two letters at the beginning, um, two truths, two false, that's the pattern. And then the one after that is true, false, true, false. Okay, so just stick with that pattern, copy paste all of the, um, you know, all of the corresponding columns. And then from there, our next connective is going to be either the conditional for the first sentence and the biconditional for the second sentence, because those are the innermost parentheses. And there you have it. Um, you fill all those in, and you can definitely review the previous video to see um, the order that I started with. I go more in depth about how I get there. And then I finally do my main connective, the V looking connected, which is the disjunction. And then I finish off the um, biconditional. And then I compare both columns, the V column and the, the um, biconditional column, it's the disjunction column. Compare those two columns and see if they both match. So there's a true in the first value, there's a true in the second value, looking good so far. However, there's a true in the first sentence, but there's a false in the second sentence. So already there's a difference, and right away you know that they are not logically equivalent. Right. Okay, so what about logical consistency? So this is when there's evaluation which makes all of them true, right? So both sentences are true going across horizontally, or three sentences. And you just have to find one row where that is the case, at least one row, and then you tell it in the answer. So in this question that we've been looking at, there in this case, there's two rows where both sentences are true. And again, you're gonna, depending on the question, if there's three sentences, then the logical consistency would be true across those three sentences. And again, you're only comparing the main connective, which is like your answer kind of thing, right? And so in this case, our answer would be, um, there is an instance of logical consistency. It is in the first and fourth sentence. 
or sorry, in the first and for first and fourth row. <laughs> okay, so what about entailment? So this one is a little bit tricky, but it's honestly, it's super easy. It's just the, the wording kind of gets kind of wonky and you just have to be um, very, very careful. So I wrote the exact definition here just because it's a little bit more specific and I just wanted to make sure that you guys have that. So sentences A1, A2, and so on. So those are the first few premises, you can call them. Entail the sentence C, or the conclusion, if there's no valuation of the atomic sentences, which makes all of A1, A2, or the premises true, and the conclusion false. So in, in other words, there's no case in which you get all the premises, all the sentences coming before the conclusion to be true, they're all three of them true, or all two of them are true, and then the conclusion is false. There isn't a case where that, it, that happens. Okay, and if there is a case, then C, the conclusion does not entail um, those sentences, the premises. So let's take a look, and I put in that little sign for you guys, which is a bar with an equal sign next to it. So that's asking, does A by conditional B entail those, um, that sentence before it? And usually there's going to be two premises, but for the sake of simplicity of this video, um, I just put one sentence. Does, does um, the first long sentence entail the second, um, the conclusion, the second part? Okay, so let's take a look. We have to find an instance where there's a true and a false. If there's, if there's true over here in the premises and a false in the conclusion, then there's no entailment. I accidentally have logical consistency up top, but it should be entailment. This is our entailment section. Okay, so we have here the first, um, first row looks good. There's a true and a true. Second row is where you run into problems. There's a true and a false. And same thing with the third row, there's a true and a false. Fourth row is looking fine, but in this case, there is no um, logical entailment. Right, because you get an instance of true and then and then false. And because that's the case, then there is no um, entailment. Okay, so some key points to remember. Um, make sure to accurately do the truth table and follow the pattern given. So remember, um, when you have two atomic sentences like A or B, just A or B in the whole full sentence that you're going to do a truth table for, you're going to only need four rows because it's like true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. However, when you get to three atomic sentences, you're going to need eight rows, okay? That is just the pattern for it, and it's gonna be four truths, four false, right after each other, and then two truths, two false, two true, two false, and then two false, two false, two false, all the way down, okay? So that's, that's the order, that's a sentence. That's how you should set up your atomic sentences, going down the columns. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me um, and definitely look at your notes. I know the professor goes over that in the lecture. Um, and also be sure in your homework to use the concepts definition to explain your answer, right? So it's like, oh, is this a tautology contradiction or a um, contingency? In your explanation, it's like explain your answer, you just say it's a tautology because there's all values that are true, all values are true, right? And so on. And so it's, it's not too bad. You guys can definitely do this. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any other questions and take care.